Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Jonathan, this game... Nice plunging V. Oh, thank you. It's new. <laughs> you know, I do Pilates next to Uniqlo and I was like, I haven't gotten one in a while. Ah, oh, there's nothing like wearing a new one. All right. Okay. This is this and that. We're going to be discussing all things, you know, V-Nex and figure skating. So if you're new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button. I also bought a turtleneck, not for myself, but anyway, I was just, you know, feeling giving, you know? Okay. I, so okay. The right you're a room. giver. You're a giver, Dave, please. I, <laughs> you know, I was, because you know, my Pilates teacher is even Russians. So like on the weekends, we have class with Natalia and that we feel so strong and positive and good. Like I do her Friday night and then Saturday morning before skating. So it's like back to back. We do the You've chair. got a type. You've got a type. Yeah. She's she's pretty fantastic, you know. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Oh, and Alexei Mishin was her professor in college. So yes. Amazing. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. She's in the okay. demo. Okay. So okay. someone said that like women between a certain age are like big fans of mine. And like, she is like key in the demographic. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I do better with moms than I ever did with anyone I was actually dating. That was so funny because like, when I was waiting tables, there was always like, I would do well with couples. I would do well with people of a certain age, you know, there's, you know. Yeah, I would not enjoy Sunday when you have to talk in your man voice to people doing uh, blah blah. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It hurts after a while, doesn't it? it? Yeah, well, think, you know we were not protecting the vocal cords, Jonathan. When we go, down, yeah, you're groveling down. Oh, yeah, it's happening. I, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. like that Silicon yeah. Valley lady. Who was the lady That's with all the fake Elizabeth blood? Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. Bingo. Yeah. That's gotta hurt her to she talk like watching that game constantly. Right? Oh, <laughs> which team are you guys watching tonight? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You're like, oh my God. Jonathan, what does yeah. your voice sound like? My low voice? Oh. Well, it's gotta, it's gotta settle. It's gotta settle a little bit. Gotta settle, yeah. And then it'll do it. But normally it's up here and very resonant. <laughs> it sounds like you got a cold after a while when you're talking. Yeah, about yeah. It's, <laughs> well, it's like, if you like depress the larynx and like release it, release it all. Yeah. 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 But I usually make a face at the same time, like I'm trying real hard. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to figure skating, everyone. Oh my goodness, it was the week we were all waiting for. We got to see the debut of Papadakis and Cicerone's rhythm dance, but they did their free dance today, which is to, it's a classical tango. It's to a cello piece. It's not really a tango piece per se. All the music nerds will be like, no, it's not really a tango piece, but they love it. So there, and I've heard that it's a genderless tango, which I'm excited to see. So yeah. that's unique. That's very 2021, 2022 uh, coming in. So I'm, you know, excited to see that spin on it. Because uh, we saw, we saw like that very artsy. It's sort of like a movie trailer for their free dance from on ice perspectives, right? That was showing parts of the music, but of course it's hard to to gauge a program in such yeah. small snippets that way. But okay, let's unpack the rhythm dance. Now, did you notice, did you notice, so Matthew Carone did their costumes and we love him the most, right? <laughs> but did you notice the color of the costumes was very familiar, right? Yeah, yeah. And even some of the cut, some of it in concept, like that oh. fleshy back, yeah. Okay, maybe the back, but you know, I went, I was having all sorts of like body image issues and I would not do the side mesh last year. So like my goal this year is to have like, side mesh just like dripping or at least be able to if you wanted to yes yeah yeah you know. yeah but i think I, I i want like tasteful side mesh i think scott at the olympics is like too much for me like i want more of a shape to it like i have like an idea for design in my head so it's you know okay okay you know for the, the blues polish program the polish blues program. <laughs> that's right that we've all been <laughs> dying to see yeah. <laughs> The program you needed to skate and didn't know it. <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, so as we previously mentioned, as we've seen a lot of top level teams put in top level efforts into what seems to just be inherently a very difficult uh, rhythm dance to tackle. It's just the pattern is hard. The genre is difficult because it's so much stationary floor movement based and in yeah, a lot of this. Skating is so white. Yeah. It's wider. 
couldn't it be seems, wider. It seems like a caricature, like they're doing an impersonation of an art form, some of them. It, and I'm not saying it's their fault. It's a real problem with, with this particular genre. I thought from the opening seconds of this rhythm dance, I thought Papadakis, Scissor on the whole team, found one of the most artful, elegant solutions to it, which was to stay put and create that angular sharpness with intricate arm movements that created interesting pictures. I was They're like, now it. this is a solution. I honest to God didn't know what whacking was before. It's an offshoot of voguing. I thought it, I mean, the twists are just But amazing. in figure skating. I mean, thought of it. Do you understand to have that kind of shoulder mobility and flexibility? Like as someone the, who's like trying to correct upper cross, that's, in, that's ridiculous. The, the opening Twizzles series, first of all, whacking in uh, figure skating obviously means something from 1994 exclusively. So this is news to me. But like the way they did those opening set of Twizzles, it was amazing with the music and the variations were complex, clean, crisp. It was, it was exactly what I want from a rhythm dance. Also, when they switch between the Twizzles and they're doing that power pull, Gold, goals. Okay, when they go the back to the front, look at how deep his edge is when he does it. So mm. also, we talked a lot, and I know that Gabby struggled, you know, I think with COVID and I think anxiety and all sorts of stuff over the last like two yes. years. Yeah. It comes alive performance-wise in this, in a way that maybe we saw in the free dance in 2019, but this is like a more fun of tempo version. She is really hit rewatch it because you know your eye goes to him because he's so freaking good right but go back and watch and watch her facial expressions and her performance and how much stronger she's gotten as a skater over the last couple of years i mean she's really really well and it's really interesting because we all, we've yeah. seen in other teams as they come up towards an olympics maybe less so this cycle because of the whole covid situation but a lot of people are almost experienced burnout going into the Olympic season. And she seems someone that has been completely rejuvenated by the time away, which so is I awesome heard, to see. What I heard from some people in Montreal is that, you know, they were having a harder time just like putting it, not, not a harder time skating, right? Like the skating was good, the elements were good, but they just weren't as far along as you would want to be for an Olympic year. And somehow over the last two weeks, it just got in a gear and just like clicked. And maybe that's really good to not be ready too early mentally. And there yeah. are teams that is typically done later events. There are times, years we haven't seen them until November, December, you know, later November, December. So I think for this, it's, it's very exciting. The reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. It was yeah. so funny because I was talking to Igor Lucanin today. He's like, the, I, think, I think Nikita just as strong as French in rhythm dance. And I said, Igor. How can people say I that? I said, Igor, I know you taught him as a kid. I think we may need to. We lower have... I said, we may need to lower your, your hourly rate with that kind of critical eye. And here we go. Here comes my candle then already. It's a plus size candle. It is 53 ounces. And I am obsessed with this because I need people like Igor away from the judging of ice dance then. Because I have to tell you, comparing the two rhythm dances, one is sophisticated, crisp, clean, strong, amazing. Like the way they have put the pattern in to fit with the music. It's, it's like Disney's Fantasia where they take your old classics and it makes it seem like the classic piece of music was written for that animated thing. They made it look like this music that they were using was composed for that pattern. Well, I and know I have a to... separate culture, but you know, over the years we've seen that the Russians lack the same cringe factor that we have, whether it's an Aboriginal dance, whether it's Nikita smiling to sing it in the rain, whether it's a Holocaust program with dirt on the faces, whether it's a 9-11 program. And I have to say, Vicky and Nikki groove into the Commodores is up there. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. Factor. All right. Yeah. And I just, it's upsetting. It reminds me actually of the, the, I think it was Face the Music, whatever the documentary was about Torval and Dean yeah. and their comeback, when they're talking about Grichik and Platov at the Europeans and they're like, well, that's just kind of like a show program. And if they wanted a show program, we would have done that. We're doing something more sophisticated and nuanced. That's, that's the same kind of comparison in front of me. Yeah. Like one is showy and they'll pretend it's just as clean and clear, but I dare them, I dare Vicky and Nikki to attempt that complex twizzle sequence with the accuracy in which the French did it. I, I'm, I'm very hopeful for the French here. Yeah, it is interesting 
Um, so I was gonna make a whole separate Russia video, but we can just discuss it in parts here. We'll just debate it. I was gonna do the whole performance, but I've been so busy with work that I've just been like exhausted and to get into character takes a lot of emotional. <laughs> but you know, I think Terry is the mother of the year this year, right? Mother of the year, Jonathan. You wish you had a mother like this, okay? <laughs> Did you notice that when Megan Duhamel was on, she mentioned that a judge at the US Classic was judging that was previously suspended at Zagreb. The Turkish judge, yeah. Do you remember this whole situation? Yeah. And do you remember that that was because of a whole situation involving uh, Smart and Hurtado and Smart, I mean, Hurtado and Sarah Hurtado and her partner and Olivia Smart and Adria Diaz, right? And that's how Sarah Hurtado, because it was a Julin panel and he was giving the marks for Julin's teams and it was a whole big thing and that's how they got to the Olympics. And it was like really salty and bitter because they added the scores together from the Golden Spin in Zagreb to right. Spanish right. nationals. And if you rig one competition, right? Well, Jonathan, do you ever notice why did, where are we this? Do you remember <laughs> why um, Tarasova and Morozov went to a Terry initially? Do you remember? You remember that they were well, using I, I was told it was because of choreographer. Remember, they wanted to get that Titanic exhibition from Danny G. They went for his genius choreography, right? Like, oh, see, and I world. thought it was because they couldn't get physically back to Marina. No, no, oh, that I beautiful see. choreography from him, right? Okay. And what choreographer does everyone in the Atari camp use? What choreographer Danny. do all girls use? Oh, uh, Danny. Right? So right. you think it's interesting that all of a sudden a Terry this year followed on Instagram and hired Alexander Julin, who has a lot of political pull and ice dance to, um, you know, uh, choreograph for Taras and Morozov. And um, huh. whose daughter is competing in ice dance with a serious lack of ability, but is climbing the ranks faster. And than with a class. serious chance out of nowhere now. At a serious Olympics. chance wow. out of nowhere and the highest debut score on a senior B ever, ever. Tell me this. I think you solved your own riddle. <laughs> you mean a rhythm dance with level three hearing loss, which she told us that she cured herself in a post that might as well have been written by her mother. Anyway, with no intervention, no hearing aids, wanting it badly enough because yeah. every disabled person wants to hear. Yeah, they should yeah. just try harder. Try yeah. harder, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, lack of a cringe factor, right? Do you remember that? Yeah. So like, let's talk about that. So all of a sudden, Diana is competing <laughs> at a competition where the Julian judge is at. So now you have three power players together. A Terry right. Tukaritza, Julian, and Igor Spielbahn working together. Jonathan, they are playing chess while the rest of the world is playing freaking checkers, okay? Yeah. That yeah. is some serious shit happening. Yeah, okay? yeah. It's real. Of the judges, think of the disciplines that they could be trading out. Russia yeah. doesn't really even need help in ladies. They can just like throw. I know. That's what's so funny about the whole thing. Yeah. Although when we talk about Japan, maybe if they have a mistake, you don't know, right? Like right. Eh, right. maybe they do. Listen, right. that's three disciplines you can trade. Oh, throw Kolyada and I mean under the bus. Like the men, like eh, we'll have to wait for the next cycle. Kolyada will throw himself under the bus. That's right. their figure like, anyway. So yeah. Okay. As a yeah. Terry told him in Japan, I mean you're bringing it down for everyone. You know. When they right. Right. Bus. Think about it. She is the mother of the freaking year. If I had a mother, she get her to the Olympics. Okay, this is what I would like to see. I think it's going to be too hard for Vicky and Nikki to do both programs in, uh, I think, think it's going to be too hard for them to do both programs in the uh, Olympic team event. Why not have Diana do um, like maybe the free dance? Because, you know, if they're already in the top five, it's hard to finish that low in the free dance and there are only five teams. It's not going to hurt Russia's chances. Why not have her skate the free dance and then she could become an Olympic champion and a Terry's own daughter could be an Olympic gold medal? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought maybe it could help. The, only, the only thing I foresee being an issue is there, are they really going to only let one lady do it? Well, they could have Koyada do both, right? Yeah. And then they would have to have a pair do both when they're probably looking or at Or a lady them. do both. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? You don't think one of those ladies could do both? Or? 
Well, I wonder if they want one of the ladies to have an extra gold medal instead of Diana. But yeah, yeah who, stranger things have happened. Like you said, there's, there's things in play here that I can't even begin to fathom. <laughs> you yeah. imagine, wouldn't it set Diana well up for the next four years? I mean, then you've got Annabelle, whose father is Nikolai and her partner has um, a parent that works in the Federation. I mean, Jonathan's mother, the caller, who screwed over Hubble and Donahue at that infamous Four Continents, doesn't seem so interesting anymore. Like, right, right. They did their work. Ever since that moment. They might as well retire now. Vicky and Nikki surged ahead in that moment at Four Continents and it put them in that, it set that the whole thing in motion. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, depending. <laughs> That's, I don't want those shenanigans to get in the way of the French. And they're trying, well, the they panel, will try. A lot of the judges on the ice dance paddle do match the judges, do match the countries that skate in the rink in Montreal. That is like one of those things that, so yeah. it could have, you don't know like what countries are wheeling and dealing. We can never trust Canada to go with the US because they have their own right. team, right? Going right. for the podium. So Hubble could be going against Gillis and Poirier. Then you have Chalk and Bates. Like, it's everyone's got their own stuff. So it really depends on which judges are. Who and to judges. me at this just point. Remember, just remember the power trio. Terry, Sasha Julin, Igor Spielbaum. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Just think about it. <laughs> but think wait, I mean, not to like jump ship for a second. Did you read this article where they're not going to have spectators? What did we Beijing? expect? I mean, they didn't have them in Tokyo and like. Right, right. I mean. And Tokyo wasn't canceling all of these events. We're like going <laughs> to the scene of the crime for COVID. Like, I don't know. Like, it's like, come on. Like, I don't know. Like, they keep canceling all of these events. We've never really learned how the situation is in China. Like, how come like we count our cases every day? We know how they are in every other country. We never hear about like how China's doing. I mean, we know that they locked down initially but they do have a billion people, right? Like someone has a cough, it's gonna spread, it's gone, right? Like but also like, I think this is, cause everyone was talking about how it affected the gymnastics and all this sort of stuff, but the gymnastics is inherently less performative than the skating. Yeah. So I find that like, especially some of these programs that have so clearly been designed to be Olympic moment programs, like with the music climaxes and all this sort of stuff, it's gonna feel so, peculiar when some of these teams are creating these big moments without- It is weird, denying. although I, I think, you know, there's not much happening in the winter, right? Realistically, that when, <laughs> when we're all cold and there's a gamma variant or a delta, whatever, <laughs> you know, right? Like, I'm gonna wanna watch some figure skating on TV. Like, I don't know, yeah. it's gonna, it's gonna yeah. happen. So, yeah. I mean, it's sad that there's no crowd, but I'm not surprised, so. I mean, we just saw that the U.S. pulled out of Asian uh, Open. A lot of other countries have quietly kind of pulled out. It just makes you wonder, like, you know, what is the situation going on there? So, no, uh, I'm not surprised. And it will be interesting then which of these teams will thrive without the added pressure of the audience and who, do you know what I mean? Will there be cardboard cutouts? Like, what, what is the situation? Be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, they said they were like, we're inviting all the locals. And I was like, okay. <laughs> we got like, the Muppets on cardboard cutouts, like in the first three rows. Like, it would totally right? spawn. Now, if they weren't cardboard cutouts, but you could like commission a Muppet, then I would do it. I would mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> but like someone like Tarasova Morozov, that I mean, speaking of this triumvirate of power, like if they're the kinds, or even Trusova, as we're talking about, that when the competition lights are up and she is struggling with that triple X on the short. Maybe if nobody's there and it feels more like a practice anyway, for all we know, maybe that will help some of these skaters. I didn't think, I got a call about Trusova from someone today who's a judge. And they were looking at Trusova's program and they said, you know, the way that the IJS rules are written, you can't get above a 625 in terms of uh, composition if you're not um, the transition, you know, if you're not doing multi directional skating. So, and um, <laughs> none of the Terry girls ever do crossovers in the other way. Right. <laughs> just like, it's not funny. Yeah. It doesn't seem to matter. Just how like those rules are written that are never followed. But just w look at how, in terms of how structurally poor her program is, yes, she's doing a million quads. But when we do see 
skating in Japan that we'll discuss in a minute, it's interesting to see what good skating can look like with some jumps because we are at least seeing triple axles, even though we're not seeing quads, you're still seeing more complete programs. So, or if you're going to choose, if you're going to prioritize the quads, which we understand that the, hit. the priority, then it just has to balance out the other way. Then it's like, okay. The hit for his lack of stuff. Correct. Other skaters have their stuff. Because like, you're making your priority for Adam Rapan used to get that hit on his quad lutz because it had zero transitions into it. And he's right. talked about that. So right. anyway, it's uh, he was on Paulina's podcast talking about that. And that was But it's it's interesting also then as we just kind of jump to the Junior Grand Prix for a second, because I watching Akatsieva's short program. She, and I wanted to get your idea on the points behind this. So she's attempting a triple axle, triple toe, mm -hmm. then does a double axle, and mm -hmm. then does the triple flip. So as we know that they're mathematicians at Sambo 70, I, they I have can't- to, They have to do the double axle because it's required. In that, junior, they're not allowed to replace the double with a triple, is that why? I think that's the case. This is so stupid. I yeah, think that's a stupid junior rules. That's why they're doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's a stupid rule. They, she should be allowed to do it. If she's allowed to do it I'm in a combo. Wrong, I'm like, I'm like pretty confident. Like I didn't, yeah. I, be, I believe that's true. I don't I study the junior Grand Prix like rules as much. I look at the, I don't really care. Um, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> then like, then, oh, then oh, that oh. makes total sense though, as I, I was. Think that would be the reason. Okay. I say, sense. get rid of that rule. That's an idiotic rule, given the time. In the same way, I think there's no reason, truth, so again, in a technical program that there are technical, they're holding technical people back. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so weird. Okay, that uh, explains it. Speaking of the people in a Terry's ring, you know, there's, there's been big drama going on with Ayona Kostunaya. And again, we have to talk about this with Danny G. So he's been giving interviews about her and it's, it all started around the Russian test gates and a couple things happened. There were rumors that she was back with Sergei Rezanov, which is, you know, not appropriate in America. Who knows about there? Um, there were- uh, You mean personally back? With yes. Her. Okay, not, not training with, but no. personal. Okay. personal. Then she didn't do the second triple axel in her free skate and a Terry was like, well, when she got off the ice um, and she was kind of acting like attitude and she had been behaving up to this point and being more compliant and getting along. But there's a lot of tension because the Federation is telling her like, look, you need to up your technical content if you want to have a shot at going to the Olympics. And, you know, they had to, you know, intervene and they were involved in Kostranaya going back to uh, Savo 70, remember all of the drama, but the money she, Lushenka and like all of that, right? Then you start to see that Danny G is giving this interview saying that, um, you know, if, you know, Shay Lin is such a wonderful choreographer. Now, remember when Medvedeva did the Allegria program and they all talked about how terrible it was? You know, like it was like universally panned in Russia, right? That was Shay Lin born. Now, Shay Lin has done so many exquisite programs. Oh, we love her so much, you know? And they're saying if, you know, if, uh, you know, Kostanaya's program was bad last year, you know, look at Alyona and not, um, and, and not the Shame. choreographer, which also is protected to Danny G, because obviously if, if someone doesn't like one of his programs, you know, it's not his fault, it's his skater. <laughs> oh, but, okay. Anyway, like I thought- A I lot was, of skaters who at fault all of a sudden- He also was saying yeah. he doesn't see any reason why Kostanaya can't do quads, it's just in her mind, which is funny because her air position has always been criticized as one of the main reasons she right. actually would struggle with that. And even some of the cues on her triple axle because of like she doesn't have the tightest air position. Um, with and it's just always not that you have to be able to do it in order to criticize, obviously, but like I just also it's so insulting that some former ice dancer is just telling you that quads are really available to everyone if you just I mean, want it hard enough. He did singles too. He did do singles. Okay. Too. Okay. So yeah, he was a junior grand prix single skater, but oh, I uh, did not know that. Okay. And he does do a lot of the coaching in the rink. Uh, but but then they also gave another interview about her where they were talking about how, you know, they try to coach her up and she keeps bringing herself back down. And apparently when she left before, like they wanted her to do the quad jump and she had gotten injured on it. And then they wanted her to keep working on it again. And at that point, there were only like three top skaters, right? And there were a right. lot of stories about 
her, you know, talking back more to the coaches, and maybe Trusa, his father was a strong personality. But now their attitude is, we have six skaters, we don't need you. But they know that she's a fan favorite, but they're talking about her very openly. So then last week, they had a major screaming match at the rink. Uh, Danny and... and Osternaya and the coaches, right? Okay. She then, you know, Terry only, you can see everything with who Terry follows on Instagram, right? She had only recently refollowed Trusa and Osternaya on her Instagram. She doesn't even follow Daria Usashova or Maya Hromik. Okay, <laughs> but she follows Tarasova and Morozov. She follows okay. Sasha Julin, and um, she does follow a fan account for her daughter and her partner. Okay. So that like shows you what where the priorities where the are. priorities lie. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, it doesn't lie. Okay, like okay. remember she only used to follow one of her siblings and not the others. Like all, <laughs> all there. Okay, right? all right. So Kostunaya blocked a Terry last week. A few hours later, refollowed Terry on Instagram. Terry has not followed her back. <laughs> Listen, there are three spots available to the Olympics. She only follows three girls in her rink. Oh my God. It's her own version Versa of the Polina. Why two birds need to have a heart attack? Why? Why? Kosternaya, no listening? Okay. There are millions yeah. of other girls, you know. Right, right. Why she need to have it hard to talk, you know? Yeah, if there's something to it. Light that candle for her, okay? Right. <laughs> no, I need all of the candle energy at the moment for the friend. She doesn't like her program, <laughs> which I agree, you know? Yeah, same, so, yeah, don't blame her. I actually liked that Billie Eilish program that all the drama was about last year, allegedly. So anyway, it's um, just, just fun it's also thing. childish i mean also like i don't know listen people you know, fight people, drink all the time <laughs> that were but i mean people give us crap about talking about these people but i was like to be the actual trainer excuse me did you not see plushenka's son skating with a sling on his arm the day after he broke it and then plushenka called him a real man on his instagram story like you just can't make this stuff up jonathan like you cannot you've not seen if you haven't seen sasha plushenka skate with a sling on his arm like you've really been missing out in life all right oh my gosh <laughs> that's terrible I, it's the comment that's terrible Again, it's like All that right. Canadian program, say, skate like a joke. You know, since Rizanov left, and the thing is that they don't want him back, be, allegedly at, um, at Sambo 70, not because of you know, his coaching, because of the Costa Naya situation and what happened mm. there. Mm. And um, but you notice that they, you know, he was the real developmental coach for a lot of those skaters. And with only so many resources, they just lost Mark Lukin to Plushenka. Plushenka's having a very good junior Grand Prix. And if, yeah. if things keep on going in this way, you have to wonder, like, is Surskaya a good enough coach, experienced enough to really be grooming these skaters? We saw, you know, Arseny's always had, Fedotov has always had a rough uh, attempts at the triple axle. He's not really... Well, and yeah, Surskaya yeah. was one of those, again, she was always one of my favorite jumpers, that Lutz was incredible, but she was one of those kinds of talents that I didn't understand if she just came that way. Mm -hmm. Like, that inherent natural spring, mm -hmm. is that something she's able to teach, or is that something she just had? I, I, there are two such separate yeah. skill sets to me, the ability to have that natural yeah. jumping leg thing, and the ability to actually teach it to others. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, we'll see. That's just like, I, I wonder if they need, I mean, there's talks about Zagita for coaching or Medvita for choreographing, but you know, they don't have the years of experience that you need in order to, you know, work. So I think there is a little bit of a gap on that coaching team in terms of that situation. And with some of the yeah. juniors, I could see more leaving if things yeah. are happening you know, in the short term, at least. I mean, how many people can do the golf coach, <laughs> right? At one time. For real, for real, yeah. yeah. And there is things that you gain from training with other skaters, but you do need that one-on-one -on -one attention after a while. So yeah, I think what, it'll be an interesting situation to see like who sticks it out for this season, because then when a lot of skaters retire, then, you know, there is more attention up for grabs, but also more skaters could then come into the rink. So things, it's very fluid, so. Yeah. I'm already wondering yeah. like, 
who's going to switch to Marie France and ice dance. Like think about all those teams that are going to retire. Right. They're going to have a lot of availability. The only thing I don't love about the rhythm dance, the middle section, their pattern is great, but I don't love the music as much as I love it. in the first, the John Legend made to love. I love it. The beginning of the end. Yeah. Parts yeah. I love. The middle section reminds me of like Virtue and Moyer's Carmen, where like it's good, but I'm just not a, as in love, right? Like okay, it's, and I do. Think it slows. Lot. It slows in the middle. I mean, it it almost needs to, and because it has, it has a big, yeah. you know, start and end. Um, but so you mean after the pattern, or you mean the section with the pattern? Actually, with the pattern, I just don't love the music as much. Was well, that just, funny? Because I just what floored me was how well the pattern was. Because it's the antithesis of what I ever want. They have to put the pattern on top of already existing music instead of coming up with a pattern. Up. I would. So I've been judging some old events with like a super ice dance fan, and I would just go back to the compulsory dance, the rhythm dance. I mean, the compulsory dance, the OD, and the free dance. This is such a joke to be doing the pattern in the middle of it. Like it does not work together well. It just doesn't, right? And well, I understood their desire to try to consolidate it, but the pattern is not, the pattern is so musical and artistic. You know what I mean? It's not a jumping element. So the idea that everyone now has to find separate music that fits these exact rhythms, like that's tough. That's tough. Although my Frankly, God, remember watching those compulsories? It might give their rivals, you know, like if, if the French are great at the OD and the free dance, it can give other teams that chance. I don't know. I'm a purist yeah. in that way. I think it's dumb, not my thing, but you know what? No one's listening to me about this. So <laughs> about TV money and whatever, right? It has nothing Amazing. to do with the integrity of the sport. All right? No, never, almost never did, let's be honest. <laughs> it's about, you know, this is about, but, you know, if they had compulsories, like, again, all the shady stuff going on there, we would see so much shady stuff happening right now in those compulsories, I feel. Of course. Yeah. It's figure like skating. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Although I remember when we went back on Patreon and Judge 98 dance with Mark Henretti, like, it was interesting going back to where it was just like, yeah, anything you want, just score it however you want. Like, and you shows, like put her foot down. On the exactly, and was still ahead. I mean, some of that thing was just nutty. Anyway, I digress. It was a fun time, yeah. But no, I, I, I love it overall. So, um, and uh, yeah. Anyway, let's talk, uh, the Junior Grand Prix, yeah, it was really just about a Katieva this week. Um, yeah. Also, I do think that William Annis had a better, in some respects, he went out, did a quad, one good triple axel, the second one was a cauchemar on, um, in the program, but uh, he has some talent. This is a real like Russia boy, like that technique. I was like, all right, he looked, it was, there were some more promising moments here. I think that- You know what it looked like to me is, it's so many great qualities in his skating. He needs to work in the present. Like he needs a massage and like his lower back in particular, like held some rigidity and it just created like a slightly stiff. Remember when we used to walk? Or he watch, to go to Luda, the masseuse, you know. I kind of, to free up that, there's more like square footage he has in that area that's just a little compressed or something at the moment. It reminded me of when we would watch old videos of Mark Mitchell, where you're like, the speed is nice and the position is nice, but somehow I can tell it's tight. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I think if he can find a little bit more buoyancy in the body, he'll be able to perform like crazy. And by the way, you, know? you mean a legitimate massage. As Galena told me when I got my first appointment with Luda, absolutely professional, magic hands. They're absolutely professional, not from adult industry. Great, absolutely. <laughs> I would have been at all. <laughs> amazing, amazing. But we just got to be careful, you know? Yeah, I don't know only we'll... one time uh, I was singing in Hawaii and I only one time did I get confused, like with where the establishment I was going to, especially for singing, like massage is crucial. Like everything needs to be free at all times. Like, so I, I'm such a proponent of it for everyone, but of course, exclusively professional. <laughs> yes. yes, absolutely professional. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now the guy that won in the men's division here, who also won previously, Gleb, 
Gelf? Glef. Um, Gleeve, as Megan would call him. Gleeve. Glee, yeah. <laughs> or Glef. Bob, as Ted probably pronounced it. <laughs> like, there's something to, again, like, sort of sky. There's something, there's like springs in his knees or something. He jumps so high. It's incredible to just see this, like, pop into the air. You know, other things are lacking in the skating and in some of the landing positions. But the spring he gets going into those jumps is pretty impressive. Yeah. But yeah. But in like you said, so Sophia was the was the story here. Oh, Three quads. So many things that I like about her skating. You know, she's got more knee bend and skating skills than other two breeds of skaters do, especially at that young age. And she does have better technique and mechanics in some of her jumps. They do just look a little bit like Q-ish in parts or like borderline, like they just look a little bit worrisome because she's getting taller and as you adjust, but it does look like there is something about her that's a little bit more wow than when you see like Petrosi. Well, when we first saw her come on this scene like two years ago and I thought she would have been eligible by this Olympics. It's crazy. It's she's not still in the not. performance for me. It's not in the musicality or the performance. It's, it's, in the mechanics of her skating and in the knee bend and in her action. And that kind of quick rotation that they all do. I mean, that's how she's doing it, but the way she rotates, there's an excitement to the speed of her rotation that doesn't look cluttery or thrown together, but it looks quite virtuosic, actually, her, the, the, way, the way she rotates in the air. The Mulan program, I mean, I, I love the music. Um, and she You're a Mulan has some, fan. I am as a Mulan fan, Jonathan. Oh yes, I mean especially the. Listen, you're going to the Tonys. You're like in Disney movie musicals now. What's happened to you? What? I've all. To be fair, listen, I have always listen, liked Mulan. Jonathan, we're filming tonight. We're ending by six because Jonathan's having a dinner party with Anne Burel, which I didn't get an invite to. But you know, it's okay. <laughs> I, you know, it's fine. What are we eating? What are we eating at this party? Well, I, I'm having it all catered. When you have like Iron Chef people in the mix, like well, I'm not going to like. Well, so I ordered like an octopus salad and I have all these like uh, mushroom bruschettas coming and there's like eggplant things happening. It's very like, you know. I got like Mexican food like made on the stove. We're getting <laughs> octopus salad? Like real? Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to make Josh cook. Josh cooked for you. I feel like that's a more intimate setting that dinner oh, we have. Honey, no, where are we catering from? Um, Settipane. It's the Italian place right across the joint in Harlem. I love it here. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. That might, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, you come back for the holiday party, Dave. They're the ones that cater the holiday They're going to be a better dessert than a Yule log this time. I was very upset by that situation. I, well, you know? when they first suggested, like, oh, you should have a Yule log at your holiday party, I was like, that sounds amazing. And then you see what it is, and you're like, yeah, we could have done with, like, Christmas. I, and it, something. Was, ugh, it was not my jam, you know. No, it that seemed something, great. like, kitschy and holiday appropriate, but not so much. You know, I would like a cake with like some pudding in it, you know, a little filling maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A figgy not? pudding. Yes. <laughs> jello pudding, maybe, you know. Amazing, bit. amazing. Are we allowed to have jello after the Bill Cosby? He's technically free, but still a predator. So Okay, I, okay. I, and I guess he wasn't making the jello. He was just singing about it. No, I don't think I mean are we to blame Jello? Was Jello to know? I don't know. How don't, would Jello know? I don't want to blame it on the Jello. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. But he is not okay. Yeah, um, correct. But uh, I saw him like live when I was like in third grade or something. I mean, my dad used to play the Noah's Ark record all the time. It, it's iconic. It's yeah, as a special, it's quite amazing. I used to watch the Cosby show all the time and a different world. So wholesome. Wait, Ghost wait. dad. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Awful. You literally cannot watch it anymore. Um, I don't want to know what he's putting in like the, the jello sauce <laughs> on the stove. He's always cooking and he's always putting ingredients in. And I can't look at that anymore. I am just, just saying. saying. Okay. We have questions. We have questions. Listen, there's a lot of guest stars on these episodes. I watched a lot of those documentaries. I don't want and to- Even as a kid, I was like, you know how much that brownstone must cost in Brooklyn? Or were they in Brooklyn, I think? I was like, this is insane, this real estate. This is amazing. Yeah. 
I mean, the nighttime is the right time, iconic. But you know, when I was looking at blues music, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, Jonathan. Yeah, right. yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's talk about Japan because this made me happy this week. Okay. So, I, this like, which so, moment in particular? Just oh it, my god. It, okay. Not show. <laughs> Not show. I know that program needs to. I be. know. Um. All right. Let's start with my favorite girls. There were three performances I loved. One that people like they love her because they say she's got joy in her skating, but the actual skating, I don't love Cowrie skating. And like, it's no. funny because Ben Wall will like say it to my face. He'll be like, he doesn't like Cowrie. He said it to Boston and someone and it's like, well, the posture is like this, okay? And that could be worked on. And we like do the Ben Wall choreography to like disguise and like, close up the fact that like she's looking down and forward and pitched front okay bent yeah an acute angle to pilates every freaking day i'm telling you she can work on that okay yeah but yeah. they don't and they instead they do the matrix and they do everything to hide it and i just like she's got speed and she's got tremendous her. speed i have to say and what i will say like that opening double axel in this free it what it reminds me of is like she's a pair skater and some powerful man just threw her into that okay, double axle. She's got a lot of good qualities. I don't dislike her, but the skating and the program, I'm like, I just don't think it's special, but the Federation loves her. She's been a consistent skater. I think she's going to make the Olympics. And I yes. think, she'll and I think she should make the Olympics. I think she'll I, I be mean, better at nationals than she did here. I'm sure we'll see the triple triples. I don't love this program. I don't no. see, I don't think that there's, I mean, it, she fell on the end and got up laughing. It's, she's very endearing. She's a very endearing personality. But Dave, Dave, don't what was the, the big moment at the end of the program was the reveal of the text. And she's like, I am a woman. And it was like this like confident moment. And she's like, I am a woman. And then she fell down on like the confident statement. <laughs> yeah, it was an unfortunate timing situation. It was one of those things you look back on and laugh. Okay, yeah. as long as it's Agreed. not keeping you from going to the Olympics or winning a medal, you can laugh at that moment. But um, I did think overall, just the program, I don't know. It's I like, keep zoning out. I zone I out a lot when I watch her. So much. Like we're just, we're seeing too much of him. And when you see like the same moves that he taught in his class, that Lindsay does, that you see Brady doing, that you see then Calvary doing, and it's even more. And, and they crazy. couldn't be more different, the, the three skaters you just mentioned. You know, so it's not like they should have a similar look. I mean, they're three of my not absolute favorites, you know, like. If Cowrie represents. But I respect all three skaters and I think each one has merit, right? Like, yeah. they, but they're not someone that I respond to artistically, emotionally. It's just not my taste. I'm not looking them up out of the blue. I'm no. watching them in context of the competition, right? And if Cowrie's current skaters out of the competition, when we're not watching it for this, it's nothing that I want to revisit. Exactly. Right? But there are some performances here that I would revisit. Yeah. So, and the Cowrie one is just not. I just think it's like this Benoit shtick. I think we're at like here with it. Well, certainly for Cowrie, because I mean, if she watched exudes... Daniel Grossel think that he's going to skate to the Nureyev music, like. Give me a break. I'm Why sorry. invite the comparison? Yeah. I just, if he thinks Kauri exudes the joy of skating, which is an amazing Apparently quality. Benoit wants to move to New York. Apparently he, Aliona, and maybe Hot Sergey coming together to New York near you. Or the New Jersey. Well, who wouldn't want to be in New York? I'm just saying. <laughs> we can see all those things up close and personal. You know, amazing. from the 90th hour to like skate looking down at the ice like Kauri. I don't know. It's Yeah. It's a lot of crap to me, but it's just, you know, it's, um, I just, again, bit. how does someone who Listen, loves and as skating, Aliona said, he was the one that recommended TJ and Delilah to her. So I'm just saying, yeah, just say yeah. there might be screenshots where I said to both Aliona and Benoit, what the heck are you doing? And Benoit's like, right. oh, no, it's a lot of nothing. So just telling you, Jonathan, like, yeah, it was something. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Okay. Right. But for a skater that athletic, yeah, that right. you're powerful. telling me that, like, think about that trio. You've got Rizanov with Kostrnaya. You've got Benoit, who set up Aliona with TJ. And then you've got Aliona. What a power couple in, like... Dysfunction. Yeah. 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 
That's figure skating. Anyway, right. no, on. what figure skating is, is Wakaba's triple X. Oh my God. The Lion King program is so <laughs> good. It's I know so it works. It totally works. And that's what I'm talking about. Like that's an Olympic uh, cinematic uh, moment. Uh, 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 um, and that dun 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 and when she just dun, opens dun, it up, uh, yeah, um, I'm um, in for it. Um, the yeah. last minute when she's doing the lunge and then she's like, <laughs> this, like oh my god, oh my god, amazing. The triple axle was so good. And now they, that's like, a triple axle. Tell where they would put Cowrie's triple axle in, but we've seen it's that's not being attempted. You know, but that? nobody does what I'm sorry, Elizabeth. People talk about it. No one jumps a triple axle like Wakaba. That was my no one. God. That, was that is an old God. 90s Tanya Midori triple axel, and I am here oh, for it. Oh my goodness. Now, yeah. I do find myself like yelling at her, like in like a mix of like English, Russian, and Japanese when she's skating. Like I got so excited. I was like, I? like, you know, like she, the flip that she doubled, you know, but she won here. Japanese Federation, but her central, okay? Yeah, she yeah. shows up late to a meet and greet. Like, you know, this girl is amazing, all right? This and whose spot is she taking? Is she taking Rika or Satoko? Yeah, she's taking Rika. Rika's barely doing a double axe on a triple sow, you know, up in Canada. Right. Come, right. I, you know what I think we've seen is that, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but when there are three spots, you have to be amazing in Japan, right? You do, you do. And I think what we've seen with Rika is that she's had a number of shots to win world titles. She could have won last year, but I think she, you know, the injury, and she could have won in 2019. Well, that year was, yeah, the one she really gave away. She gave away both, right? When I'm looking at this field, I'm thinking we've got Cowrie, who's very consistent. We've got Probably Mana. Probably the most consistent, actually, of all yeah. of them. Right, and I'm giving that to her. We've yeah. got Mana. You've got Reno, who's amazing, and you've got Wakaba, who could legit medal. Yeah. I don't see the need for Rika because, frankly, as Jonathan Byer likes to remind us, she's very slow. She is. And performance-wise, she's got nothing. So right. the Titanic program, for me, was a lot of crap. So yeah. I don't really see the spot for her on the team unless the other ones fall apart. See, I feel they're going to take it away from Satoko and give it to Rika. I see they could oh, potentially yeah. be Reno? thinking. What about Reno? I mean, I don't know. How about her? How about her? Skating is so good. The musicality is next level. And I yeah. love Satoko, but she's gotten her way on more than a few teams that. A hundred percent. And I, I acknowledge that. Yeah. And I adore her skating. Yeah. But the jump rotations are not getting better. And attempting a triple axel here, I adore her skating. I just don't think current Olympic competition is where her strength really is. You know, mm -hmm. like I think yeah. a show, like put her, she got her own tour. Like, like there's so many good things, but it, when they're dinging for jump rotations and it's not getting better, you know, and right. it hasn't gotten better. And now, and it was good when she was the consistent one and the other ones were struggling, but now they've all gotten so much stronger. So right. I, uh, I don't know, Reno, I loved. But I loved I'm curious about Reno, like- The double axle to the back outside three transition out. Like I, the skating skills and the combination between the jumps and the- um, Are we gonna see her on the Grand Prix? Oh, you're asking. Let's check that because you know where it comes down to, especially as we talk about like with the ladies field in the US, I think a lot of them have to determine who's going to get international buffers. So, okay. And we know Satoko can be a human yes, Zamboni. She's going to NHK like and Ross Telecom. Okay, well, this is, I mean, there'll be tough fields, but I'll be interested to, to see how she does there and how she's received in the PCF. And she's, uh, Machiko Yamada and Mihiko Higuchi are her coaches. So uh, I am ex I'm ex I really like her. I think she's got the full package. Um, Wakaba, I think, has a full package. And Mano, that was an incredible performance that she did. Yeah. The triple axel stepped out of. But the rest of the program had such spark. There was such interesting choreography. It had interesting, you didn't know what was coming next. And you rarely see that in a, in a program today, especially when we watch 27 Russian programs for weeks on end or right. in a special. 
that was incredible. Like yeah. I was so interested from beginning to end, the knee bend, the skating skills, everything was like, wow. Yeah. Those the way people, speed is generated in, in in that country, like is just taught in a very aesthetically three, pleasing way. Japanese ladies, the top three at this event made me like believe in skating again after watching yeah. all of this formulaic crap for yeah. months. Okay. Small and inward and cluttered became like big and projected and exciting. And, and they did triple axles. Now the people yeah. in the comments will of course say, well, they didn't do any quads. And it's like, well, you know what? They but did this triple. kind of triple axle is more exciting to me than these little quads. So I don't know, like the okay. walk of a triple it's axle. Amazing gave me to watch through to the jump, but there is no program, and to me, that's not skating. I think the well balanced is the skating, and that's just my personal view. And yeah, yeah. it's what I, I happen to share that opinion. Listen, they were doing big jumps too. Those yeah. triple toes were big. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah, the ice coverage and the height, like the trajectory of those things, that's what's so it's exciting about that. Theory, the GOE should have more of a difference. Right. Now, Mono, some of the spins, not her friend, you know, but, um, you know, overall, I think they were really, but Wakaba's Lion King. Oh my goodness. It was so. And again, I think it's so well crafted. I think it is constructed yeah. to be a giant emotional moment. Like if yeah. she nails that at the Olympics or Worlds or it's some sort of thing, I know exactly where I'll get all emotional about it. I know exactly where I'll be like euphoric. I It's in the music, it's in her delivery of it, like 100%. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Now, yeah. Shun Sato. Uh, landed four quads at this competition, but we didn't get to see it uh, on the, vi it's not, the video's not on YouTube, but um, I know the Japanese rights holders, there's always like, you know, the, the videos stay down, the, that stuff always happens, but it's always such a shame. But okay, Shoma Uno's Bolero. Jonathan, why? Like, why? You, like, least or less? Valjevas or Valjevas? <laughs> Because you know what it is about Shoma? Shoma doesn't have a quality program to Bolero, but Shoma, even when he's messing up, skates with this abandon that is so alluring to me. So I'm I into the energy of the performance. The last moment and go back to the Robin. Like maybe we'll suffer through this Bolero for the Grand Prix. And then right before like nationals, we go back to dancing on my own, right? when he, Which I loved, you know, I loved it. That yeah. had heart and soul, and then it will be refreshing because we won't be sick of it because we've seen yeah. it a bunch of right. times. Right, right. But I mean, these jumping passes, like the quad loop was crazy, then doubling out, then having other issues. It just, it was a bit more of that same unorganized chaos that we've become familiar with. And the music, this like, remixy bolero did not work and he's a dancer and was not really doing anything interesting in the program but again his just inherent performance energy and commitment even to subpar material is more exciting than anything i've seen Bob david you know so yeah pretzel pretzel fast fast energetic and the music is going dun, 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 dun. <laughs> So at least Shoma heard some of the music, it seemed. So, and now was Yuma not here? Not here. Is that a small competition? I don't know. This is all okay. about who's agent is who. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, I and that's again, the one like, we want to see. Okay, right. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Hundred percent. But Yuzu never does this event, so right. So. Said normally Johnny Weir and um, Jeremy Evans. <laughs> Yeah, I know. they always magically find a way for other countries. They're like, yes, we'll send the washed up American professional. Yeah, that we love in a show. Yeah, that we love, <laughs> never known for landing the jumps. Right. Know, there was those years where like, Jeff Buttle won the Japan Open and Adam won it one year. Adam won it the year that he debuted his Rachmaninoff program and it won the Japan Open and then tanked. Remember, he didn't make uh, right. the whole team that year. Right. So, just Yeah. But yeah, that's just, Jeremy's had some doozies in, in Japan before. Gracie yes. had some doozy moments as well. Yes. Yeah. Back when it was more country related, right? Because wasn't it Japan versus Europe versus North America? Yeah, because well now yeah. with COVID, we don't get to see, you know, that. Right, but, right. But yeah. another great opportunity for all of the, like I feel like this was an important event for Wakaba 
to throw out such an amazing triple axel and and get that win this puts her in really good stead there yeah. so right. and i'm rooting hey. no mind me hara here though, correct no there was we just didn't see the video she was about fifth uh, okay so. okay got it oh. yeah the video is hard to find on this one yeah it was on like really late at night too my friend was watching it like messaging me getting the messages on my phone and i was like i'm 35 i can't do it you're in college. <laughs> you know, like, I can't. yeah exactly i'm not waking up at now, like i know that it's japan i have to go to pilates at eight like i know like it's just oh and like the video might not be up but like i yeah you know it just if it's meant to be it'll be que sera sera you know <laughs> yes okay so yeah there's been lots happening did you see my video jonathan how was my impression all right you got to see it in person what did you think okay so what's so interesting is when i was listening okay so dave posted a video of like a trajectory of his training moments with galena and i was like oh this lady sounds like she's doing an impersonation of dave's impersonation <laughs> I mean, because it, the cadence is correct. And you know what? Now I know how it's in your ear is because it's quite repetitive at times. <laughs> like she falls into that pattern. And I was like, yep, this is down. Uh, all I'm down. all about, I'm all about exaggeration. Down. You did exaggerate. When she, sure. What did she say? She's like, you look like you're going to the restroom. <laughs> that was so funny is that a lot of people thought that she was telling me to look like that. She was shading me for that. She yeah, was I, that was clear to me. No, yeah. no, no. And she also laughs at her own jokes. As yeah, she same. <laughs> so she was telling me that I looked like I was, as she's yeah. laughing to herself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That she's full a, of quips that tickle her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you know, we didn't show the part of you know working on the axle when it's not going well, and then she's you know <laughs> turning her back and said, "Dad, Dad, oh my." As if it's intentional. Yeah. Oh my. No, Oh, <laughs> this is what you love to do. All right. <laughs> Great. Give me an alternative. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I could have used more Oscar. I'm not going to lie. Oscar. Yeah. Oscar. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Needs his own. Needs she was his talking own. about a dog crate the other day that someone was picking up at her house and just like, how you say what? Jail for dog. I'm like, oh, oh God. No, don't say that. <laughs> The dog likes it. Yeah, <laughs> it feels cozy. Oh man, but I am so ready. Now we're gonna get Finlandia happening. Like it's really heating up from here. Yeah, so. this is great. It's Finlandia next week. Also a Junior Grand Prix or are we finished with the Junior Grand Prix? It's endless, isn't it? I think I Isabel's at the next one. I'm just... Oh, okay, that's right. We haven't seen her the second time. Haven't seen her. You haven't seen the last of me yet, but I'm getting ready for Finlandia. Yeah, then that's going to be a hopefully big Hopefully we've got the Asian Open in a couple of weeks if it's still like uh, happening because yeah. then we're going to see Sui and Han. Uh, right. That'll be a big moment. Yeah. It's going to be. So what was your moment of the week? Because for me, it's between two. <laughs> but yeah. eh, that was on the day one. Day two is Wakaba's. I know. <laughs> so I'm the same with you. I, that, that um twizzle variation incredible and that opening the arm sharpness sensational and walk about 100 percent 100 percent so yes <laughs> hold an edge it looks sexy everyone